First example here, we're going to see a try catch statement. And what happens here is that we set up a function. And this function we just call message. And then when that function runs, we're going to run it through our try catch series. So first comes the try statement here. And notice that we have purposely put in an error. We've misspelled alert here. And we want the message to be displayed, welcome to educator.com. Now, we know we've purposely set this up so that we know that that's not going to happen because we've got that error. But what we're testing for here is does the try catch series of statements catch this error and then what does it do about it? Well, in our catch statement here, we say catch this error. And then in the curly Q brackets, we list the possible examples. And so we want the text to display one of these things. There was an error on this page. And actually, it'll, it'll display all of these things in, in, the, uh, in the alert box. The error description. And then that we want the user to click OK to continue. What the user will see when the page loads is a command button that says welcome, display the welcome message. And that's what we want to have happen. When the user clicks that message with this program, the welcome message won't display because we've got that error in there. All right, so let's take a look at how this happens in the browser. All right, when the program loads, we see that everything looks okay right now. It says display welcome message. All right, let's see if we click that button and we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, we get an error. The error says just what we thought it would say. There was an error on this page, the error description, and if there is one, and click OK, okay to continue. Uh, say OK. All right, so when we tested that, the try catch is used very much in testing. It's, it's, uh, it, it's used by programs to test if there's problems with your web page, and then it is used by users so that they know that an error has occurred and something went wrong, and then they can either reload the page, go to another page, try uh, to find that information elsewhere, or if you've set up enough try-catch examples, and then uh, the error might get solved through what you tell the user through the alert boxes. All right, let's see what this should have looked like if I go to our next example here. Notice in this program, we've got our function message still set up. And here in the try statement, we have set, up, set it up with a properly spelled alert statement. All right, we still have our errors down here, the error listed. So if an error does occur, it will catch it. But because we've got this set up correctly, we actually should see the welcome to educator.com message. And so this is sort of like step two. When you run a try catch error, if you detect an error, then you at least know where the error is happening. It's happening in your try statement. And then you can try to correct that and then run it again and see if the error happens again. If it doesn't, you've corrected the problem. If it happens again, then you got to go back into your code and troubleshoot some more. Let's see if this has been solved.